This is a 70-year-old male with、uh, 30 minutes history of、uh, acute loss of left arm、uh, strength, left arm clumsiness, and left facial numbness and weakness.、Uh, when he was trying to use the arm,、uh, couldn't do it. So suspect stroke.、Uh, CT is called normal. And didn't see any abnormality, no evidence of acute stroke, no loss of gray white matter distinction.、Uh, and then patient had a follow-up MRI about a few hours later, which、uh, showed in the central sulcus、uh, and the precentral sulcus that there's white、uh, teeth flare signal, and on the other side, and there's bright signal within the superior central sinus. Normal blood flow void is black, and this white signal is clot in the supraspinal sinus, transverse sinus, and going to sigmoid sinus. It is difficult to visualize on the CT study. How, however,、uh, on the MRI study. You can see the cortical vein thrombosis easier with bright T1 signal, one vein, the other one, two on the right side. You can see it better on the、um, gradient echo images, the so-called cord sign, C-O-R-D, cord sign, which, which is right here, the the lining. On the surface, which you see the black lining, they are the hemosiderin deposition. They are the clot. Here on the other side, here on the flare, almost look like、uh, the vein with some adjacent hemorrhage, because they somehow they're ill-defined. They're filling the gap in the、uh, sulci.、Uh, however, uh, on GRE, you don't see the subarachnoid hemorrhage, so. That is the appearance of cortical vein thrombosis bilaterally, and on T2, it's harder to call. I guess this is normal vein, and this is clotted vein, with some tram track kind of a appearance. A normal vein here, abnormal vein here. In the、uh, diffusion wind images, you can see the blood clot easier. Uh, f- following the superior sinus, however, the cortical vein, due to distortion adjacent to the、uh, surface, is harder to see the clot. But anyway, I like the diffusion, not just for the stroke, but also sometimes the blood clot tend to stand out.、Uh, just always check that. The good thing is、um, this patient's symptom resolved、uh, with hydration. Uh, so there's no permanent damage from this venous、uh, thrombosis. Otherwise, they, if they are completely thrombosed and there is no collateral drainage of vein, they could cause venous ischemia, and that's probably what、uh, result in the symptom of this patient. And then, if no treatment, they could cause、uh, stroke and venous stroke and uh, uh, hemorrhage.、Uh, I don't know why it's hemorrhagic stroke. I guess tend to cause hemorrhagic stroke.、Um, I assume、uh, because of the vein doesn't drain well, the fluid around the vein is not purely water like CSF, so they don't suppress normally.、Uh, then、uh, MRV was performed to verify this finding.、Uh, on the right side is a contrast enhanced MRV of the dural venous sinus system. Which is better than non-contrast because you literally see the vein、uh, have the clot.、Uh, the 3D picture is helpful to identify the big vein that's clotted. The normal side, the abnormal side, is pretty much、uh, clotted with without complete occlusion. But what I'm trying to say is the the dur- the cortical vein thrombosis is not that easy to tell. For example, I, I link this two study together. Look at this two cortical vein that's thrombosed. There is a little vein that's connected forward, 
uh, doesn't have a clot in there. Starting here is a clot. In the corresponding area, you can see the vein here, and then scroll, scroll, and all of a sudden disappeared. Normal vein here, and then he follow the pointer, disappeared. That is a clot. So that area is corresponding to this area. So when you when you're trying to see a filling defect of the cortical vein, you have to know where it is and then scrutinize. That's why the cortical vein thrombosis is not very easy to diagnose, even on MRI venogram. Sometimes the MRI is better. MRV uh, sometimes is helpful to differentiate arachnoid granulation tissue, which is basically like a little mushroom-like uh, kind of a filling defect versus a clot like a, a sausage in the uh, in the vein that's uh, that is uh, the signature like that kind of sausage going for multiple slice uh, is that is indicative of uh, uh, jovenous sinus thrombosis so the learning uh, teaching point is uh, sausage is, uh, is clot and uh, mushroom is not um, the cortical vein is difficult to identify. Many times it's not even that dense. It's not bright on T1 yet. So you ha really have to scrutinize on CT. And supposedly, I'll show you some of the literature teaching of the dual venous sinus thrombosis. And this is the uh, literature teaching of uh, dual venous sinus thrombosis. Basically, blood clot in the vein uh, stop draining the uh, corresponding parenchyma, they always show the hyperdense clot sign, but uh, we don't get that today. I will show you again. We don't have that kind of hyperdense clot, so sometimes hard to uh, diagnose. This is the show the clot, and the, this was pediatric patients. So newborn, they tend to have dehydration, have the big uh, venous clot, and they die. So very serious disease. Um, that is the um, a clot. Uh, was not uh, called because uh, it's difficult to identify it, and then later was progressed into um, larger uh, hemorrhagic venous infarct right here. Uh, this hemorrhage, this is venous infarct, this is a clot. Uh, this is another uh, literature, literature case here shown that a flare scan in this patient in ER with headache and convexal subarachnoid hemorrhage on non contrast in CT. Not shown in there. Disclose a hyperintense signal in the left central sulcus. Is that the hem subarachnoid hemorrhage or is that the cortical vein that clotted? It's very similar to our case. Could be both. Could be clotted vein with subarachnoid hemorrhage and uh, could go further down the hill to thrombosis. Again, here you show the um, uh, clot, uh, the tram track. Uh, blooming artifact, look at other veins, they are not that thick, they are not that black, they are not that tram track like. They are comparing the clotted vein as a with blooming artifact, the black and the supercentral sinus which was n not uh, clotted and does not have the blooming artifact. They are suggesting the cortical vein thrombosis is occurred in isolation. Ours is the main one, and then maybe con extending to the cortical vein. Sometimes they just occurred in isolation. Uh, this one just showed the hyperdense uh, 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 cortical vein. We don't have that. And the contrast enhanced, you literally see the outline of this black clot by the non occlusive portion of the vein. Uh, this, again, this is the the cord of vein, uh, the clot that have a little bit of blood around the vein that's draining into the supercentral sinus. I guess they're all different cases. Uh, they could progress into hemorrhagic infarct, so it is. Uh, we should recognize this uh, important uh, entity. Uh, this is another cortical vein. Somehow they all center adjacent to the. Uh, motor cortex and sensory cortex, that region is a very important anatomical region, uh, eloquent area, so look, especially scrutinize the vein near those areas. They, they are important, 
and they're commonly involved. So uh, you don't see the cortical vein thrombosis in the frontal lobe in any case, and including in my case today. And just to review, this is the um, original CT. Maybe the black clot here, uh, maybe you can see it there. S look at the literature one, this hyperdense. This is relative hypodense. So, and then cortical vein is difficult to call. Yes, there are two. You, you can measure it. Uh, let's see, point of interest. How dense? This is about 67. So above, above 60, you can start calling clot, but uh, it's hard to pr prospectively call. This portion, remember the horizontal portion was not clotted. Let's measure that uh, density. Uh, this area is 52. So this is 52. And then you move over here, you will get a slightly higher measurement. Very difficult. So to me, blood clot, uh, the, the, draw, the, the line that I draw uh, is Hansfield of 60. So this is, there are two v uh, cortical vein there. And supposedly the other two are also clotted here. Very difficult to call prospectively. Very difficult to call. It's easier to call on MRI. Two vein, this two vein is harder to call only because of uh, because of T1 that helped me a lot. You'd never seen the uh, normal vein to be that bright. And the uh, diffusion helpful for the blood clot in the tumor venous sinus. And chrono is helpful to compare to the other side. This is normal blood, normal flow void black one, and here's a clot, the white blood clot. The patient uh, recovered, uh, was discharged from the immersion room. Uh, I guess it starts uh, starting the Coumadin, Lonox, and uh, hydration. So that was the recommendation of neurologists.